Here's my hard pack triple copies. Actually, I don't think it's ready to eat yet. We'll just drop a millworm in for it and see. Because I think it only molted like a week ago. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not ready to eat. But we'll take a nice look at it. What a beautiful tea. Well, the millworm is triggering a response. Oh! We grabbed the millworm. Maybe we'll just drop a couple millworms in there for it. Uh, I have some uh, dubias sitting here, but um, they're kind of crunchy, so we'll take it easy with it. Use only soft food. Look at that beautiful teeth. Do a couple more. Maybe too many now. Where she can't quite tell if it's one that she already has or it's a new one on the floor. That's pretty much when you've maxed out how many small food items you can feed them consecutively like that. All right, let's move on to something else. Alright, so here is my larger Formictibus Concerites. Hopefully it moves slow. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> right, let's try to feed it. Once they get a food in their mouth, they calm down. I don't know what's going on with this tea right now. It's acting crazy. Hoping it's gonna eat or not run. Because if it runs, it's gone. Can't tell if it's hunting or giving a <clears throat> defensive pose inside of its hide there. These things like to um, stand on like <clears throat> stilts when they eat, so they usually come out after they grab their food. <clears throat> They'll stand up really high. I think it's to not let the food source grab the ground and pull around. But they, uh, both of them seem to do it. Nothing is happening. <laughs> there we go. He grabbed it, but we missed it. Hopefully the second one will do better. All right, here's another uh, Mercedes Concerides. There we go. 
They're so fast I didn't want to uh, take the lid off and feed. So uh, we're going to take the lid off after we fed it. Hopefully going to move this around here so you can see a little better without disturbing it. You know, once they get food in their mouth they're usually pretty cool. Look at the beautiful colorations after this last molt. We're looking at four different distinct colors here right now in this phase of this tea's life. Very cool. Wow, that's awesome. All right, let's move on to something different. All right, so this is the extremely sketchy to feed. Hysteria creates gigas. <clears throat> this is a really big tea, and it is quite crazy when it feeds. So let's see what we can get going on here. Yeah. Alright, that wasn't too crazy. Sometimes it can be because it's it's a it attacks very fast. I've had it run completely out of the enclosure. I pull back, it grabs the food and then it runs back into the enclosure. <laughs> it's uh it's been sketchy most feedings with it but that went pretty good uh, this is another one of my teas that I need to get a 10 gallon enclosure for pretty quick here I'm in the process of finding a new place to live and um, so I haven't been too quick to do some of the bigger rehousings I want to wait until I move again. I will be purchasing, I think, like seven or eight 10 gallon enclosures and making them into uh, permanent homes for my female teas. All right, let's feed the other one as well. All right, we're on to the second one. Again, sketchy, sketchy. It just ran from the top back down another hole when I first started, uh, right before I started filming. It already got me pretty jumpy. This is kind of a big food source for this tea, but it should be okay.
Okay, it ran, but it kept eating. <laughs> oh, jeez. That was scary sounding. Uh, I wish there was more visuals, but there was great sound. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, let's move on to something else. Thanks for watching this week's video. If you liked it, please like, share, and subscribe. There is the subscribe button. There is a video recommended for you. And there's the AGT Exotics playlist. Alright, see you guys next week.